What up guys, welcome to Archive TV. I'm joined today by Mac. He's uh, been part of the Archive team for a long time. We're actually gonna be starting a Grow Log series together, which uh, I'm really excited for. It's gonna be kicking off here in a few weeks. But I figured have Mac on a video, do uh, maybe a little review here. Why don't you just go ahead and explain yourself kind of a uh, little bit about you know what your involvement is here with the uh, Archive and all that? So my name is Mac, as he said. Uh, hey everyone, um, I've been part of Archive Portland since the beginning. I've known Fletch for about 20 years now and been growing just as long. Uh, my day-to-day -day these days is running the store and the nursery and uh, curating the menu, uh, the clones, and a bunch of other stuff. So, excited to be here. Figure we'd start off with, uh, since you are the curator of the menu, kind of wanted to get some recommendations from you as far as some stuff that we might want to try. We've been doing a ton of flower reviews lately, so I wanted to definitely get some hash in this trip. So I'd asked you for a couple of recommendations, and you made a couple last night. Me and Fletch did a couple of videos. We liked all that. Uh, I want to save a couple for you and me to do today. So the first one we're checking out right now is some honey banana. Um, I've tried this strain before. Uh, it's always been... I, it's hard for me to tell the difference between just honey banana and just straight straw nana. Anything with that banana turp in it kind of takes over. Yep. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about Echo, the company that made this? Uh, Echo has been down here in Oregon since the beginning of REC. Um, they're one of the premier um, extract companies. Uh, recently, they've been getting into doing rosin as well and been putting out some really good work. Um, most people down here in Oregon are going to be familiar with them. Uh, they put out fire. Um, they are, you know, craft, craft forward, care about quality over quantity, and uh, do a lot of community stuff as well. Uh, one of the things that they really like to do is um, focus on bees and a lot of their proceeds go to bee charities and things like that. Oh, they're on the save the bees thing, huh? Yep. All right, that's cool. Yeah. Good, good people. Yeah. Anytime a company gets behind a cause, just makes you want to support them a little bit more like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a, this is a fitting one if, since they are all about saving the bees. We got the honey banana here. Like I said, you crack the jar on this, I'm just hit in the face immediately with those intense banana terps that, like I said, for me, with any banana involving hybrid are pretty tough to, to mask, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that one is straight candy banana runts. And then the, the, the honey banana is uh, straw nana and like honey boo-boo, which I think is some kind of, it's a, it's a Bubba OG, I think, cross, something like that? I, I believe so, yeah. Again, not getting any kind of cushy notes whatsoever out of this. This is like straight up Banana Alley right here. Yeah, I don't smell Bubba Kush. I smell banana runts. Yeah. Like it, when I was five. Yeah. And I was throwing them away out it's, of the package, you know. The weed <laughs> banana terp is not a banana. Like no. if you would eat a banana, it's that artificial candy banana that was in so many, like you said, of our favorite when childhood it's good. candies. When it's good. I'll tell you yeah. what though, when I got runs as a kid, I ate all of them but the bananas or I ate the bananas yeah. last. Same. I enjoy smoking banana more than I enjoy that banana terp. Yeah. You know, let me go in on one here out of the MMP. This strain is supposed to yield really well as well for water hash. Ooh, I went in cold. They Ooh, did make a, a live butter as well that was BHO uh, that people were really, really stoked on. You know what I found interesting is um, I see BHO a lot more out here, especially like more like the mid to high end BHO out here mm -hmm. still. It seems like people smoke it more, more so than they do in California. Yeah. Where I'm from, it's like PHO kind of had its heyday. Once rosin came along, everybody, like especially the high-end smokers, the people that are willing to pay $80, $100 for a gram of hash, yep. very quickly switched over to the rosin, and BHO kind of became this like redheaded stepchild that everybody just wanted to pretend didn't exist or couldn't be good still, yeah. you know? I don't know. The, the market here, I mean, it's now, like it used to be 90%. BHO 10% solventless. I'd say it's probably more like 50-50 now. Wow, that high even. Uh, if not higher um, on the solvent side, but uh, most of the solvent stuff is gonna be like your budget shatter, you know, like $10 a gram out the door. Uh, whereas 
in rosin and bubble, like, you know, you're looking at the high end customer, um, which is in Oregon, there's a lot of both, right? Yeah. So if you're super budget conscious, like usually the lower tier rosin is not going to be very good. Right. Whereas you probably could still find some pretty good shatter to get the job. Yeah. As far as what's going to be more enjoyable to smoke, that $50 gram of oil is going to mm -hmm. probably taste a lot better or just be maybe a little bit more unique or exciting probably on the nose too than that $50 gram of rosin. Yep. Or maybe I'm thinking California prices. Things are a little bit cheaper out here, but like I said in the California market, you you don't see any of that mid-tier high tier. It's only the 10 to $15 yep. really really cheap shit. Just yep. just basic, you know, butter that's kind of doesn't really, you know, blow you away or, or just some cheap shatter like you said. So what what did you think of that? It, it I went in probably a little bit too low on that one. So all I got was terps. It, it's one of those ones where it's like almost so terpy, you get that little like nose tickle. And tingly. Yeah. yeah. It's a uh, it's a nice one though. It's uh, like me and Fletch were talking about the other day. There's uh, there's some terps that I keep around or that that I like to smoke just for the flavor, and they tend to not really get me where I want to be, you know what I mean? It's almost, I describe it as like, that's a piece of candy, but I'm still gonna need a meal here at some <laughs> point, you know what I mean? And I, I get like a lot of like, you know, the favorite, uh, you know, hash strains over the past few years, you know, straw nana, papaya, um, to all the tangy type terps and all sure. that kind of stuff. It just doesn't tend to pack the punch that I'm looking for, um, but, I see why people keep it around. And like we were talking about with like the, uh, the amnesia, yeah. there's certain strains out there where like if you want to do mixes, you know, for, for extracts especially, you can just use that as cut. Just put a little bit in there. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like for me and my palate, that's what those kind of flavors are best used for, to just put them, mix them into other runs, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of add a little bit of that flavor that you like maybe, but hopefully add it to something that packs a little bit more of a punch, you know? Definitely. And maybe that's just how it affects me. Um, I know some people, you know, smoke a ton of straw nana. It's one of their favorite things to smoke. They say they love the high of it also, you know? Everybody's different with the effects that they're looking for, you yeah. know, and that and that probably even changes a lot throughout your life, you know. Um, I used to like a lot heavier stuff, and now more and more, I want just a little bit of flavor and a little bit of a head change. You yeah, know? and so it just depends on what you got going on, and you know where where you're at. So yeah, we've talked a lot about how your palate can kind of shift over time and kind of change, but I never really thought about that. You might. I mean, it makes sense depending on like kind of where you're at in life, what you got going on on a day to day basis, yep. how focused you really got to be. Yep. If you if you can just do, if you do something where you can kind of be creative all day, well, you can go a little, little bit deeper maybe. Yep. But if you got to, you know, keep your numbers straight all day, well, maybe that, that uh, it's just interesting to think about. Is it the preference that change or is that lifestyle that prompts the preference change? You know what I mean? I know for me, you know, when I'm doing paperwork all day and I got to be accurate. I don't, I can't be super stoned when I'm doing that. You know, I, I do like to have a little head change and I, I enjoy the, the effects and, and flavor along the way, but it's the end of the day where I want that. Okay, I'm done. Now it's time yeah. to relax and blow all that away. I know? guess that's kind of always been my favorite thing about weed in general too is like with all these different varieties they really do if you want to maximize your experience they all kind of do have different applications like there's some stuff to me that's like strictly a morning smoke you yeah. know what i mean yeah. most of like the classic call them sativas but like the, you know the longer flowering strains like that's i love smoking that kind of stuff in the morning or if i'm gonna write or do something where i want to be in my head yeah. and like really just kind of let it go but then there's there's other stuff where it's like all right i only smoke this shit at night bro because yeah. <laughs> i can't have nothing important to do after uh -huh. i'm smoking this you know but it goes real well with the movie yeah <laughs> and that that like contrast is just what makes this plant like so special and so different than anything else and what keeps me interested you know the nuance of effects is almost endless with this plant yeah. you know and it is one of my favorite parts of it as well and just i mean visually too like the different way that it ways that it expresses itself and just like all the different consistencies of hash and all the different processes and everything. It's like, like you said, it really is endless kind of the, the whole spectrum 
of all this stuff. So even if it's a flavor that I don't necessarily typically enjoy mm -hmm. myself historically, I, I still like to see all types of different stuff all the time, you know? Definitely. And this, uh, this one falls in that category. It's uh, maybe just a little bit... No, I'm, I, I was going to say, yeah, I'm, I'm just getting like a straight straw on anything out of here. I, I, I would love to see, I've never seen them side by side. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've smoked honey banana before. I've never actually seen the flower. I've only ever seen, I think I've only ever seen rosin made from this before. I think it's really ugly flower. Yeah, I would know? kind of expect uh, that. It's like, I feel like there's kind of like two camps in like hash and extracts world, right? There's taking care of like the excess from your flower, your trim, your bee nugs. And then there's companies that are literally just trying to find stuff that tastes really unique and it doesn't matter what the flower looks mm -hmm. like, right? And on the, especially with solventless, like finding something that actually yields and has a unique flavor, oftentimes the flower does not look good. It's not flower that you'd want to go buy uh, if you're just looking with your, with your eyes, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's part of the fun, right? Is like, we're so focused on what things look like now. I think a lot of really good stuff gets passed to the wayside. And so with this like resurgence and hash, I think um, a lot of more unique strains that would have gotten passed up like, you know, three or four years ago, cause they don't test high, they don't look crazy. Like now they're starting to get into rotation and we're getting well, more think, flavor. Yeah, now too that like, there's a better understanding at least in general of like what you need to do to preserve all the volatile parts of this, mm -hmm. which are you know mainly the terpenes and stuff like that, that. If you don't take care of this in every single step of the process, which with legalization, there's only been more steps added in, yeah. you know? Definitely. So it's like everybody kind of has to know what they're doing in order for the final product by the time it gets to the customer to be representative of the quality that it started at, you know? So yeah. I think that's kind of what sets a lot of people apart, you know, that's it, especially in the, the legal weed industry is like how on top of, of that entire process are you, you know? When I see like, you know, some companies are, they're flower producers and they make extracts or concentrates as a secondary to their flower. And then there's, companies that are hash forward, you know, and like that's their main focus. And, and you see a big difference in the products that they put out on that end, because yeah. um, not to say that secondary hash can't be really good, but it's like, you know, they're focused on putting out the best flower. And uh, when the companies that are really focused on putting out the best hash, like it's just, it's a different process. It's a different mindset really um, that's your if that's your sole focus it's going to be different from even the selection of what you're going to grow you definitely. know what i mean yeah so yeah i uh that's one thing that too when you brought up you know smell i mean with the way it is in a lot of these legal states like california i mean you can't smell anything now yeah. everything comes pre-packaged and well, I like to, every time I get stuff from the shop here, like I look at the package date on it and everything's like a month at the, at the highest. I mean, the yeah. stuff we smoked last night, it said it was packaged like eight days ago or something like that. So to get through packaging, testing all that on the shelf into my lungs, it, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of stuff that you can find like that in California right now. And you're not going to be able to smell anything anyway. So the whole deli style where you can walk in and kind of oh, you're interested in this? Well, I don't have to even put my nose in the jar. As soon as you crack that, I caught the whiff. And I'm like, okay. Because like we were talking about the other day, if, if, if you had to only go off one sense, like you're saying, everybody's going off visual now. That would probably be the last sense there. Or it, nose would be first is what I'm trying to say. You know, if I hand you five jars, do you want to pick, and you get to pick one, do you want to pick just by looking at them, just by feeling them, or by smelling each jar? You know? Not even a question. Smell. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care what it looks like. So, so <laughs> now that it's like, you know, the whole, I mean, I got to enjoy Prop 215 and I got to enjoy the heyday of dispensaries where I'm from. So I'm not necessarily complaining for myself so much anymore. I don't particularly want to stand in line and, and be at a dispensary anyway nowadays. But, you know for the people who are just getting into it in the last couple of years and think they're getting to experience like legal weed. Oh, this is awesome. I'm like, man, this used to be so much better. And coming out here and seeing that how things are done a little bit more like how they used to be done in the medical days in California, it's, uh, it's nostalgic, it's refreshing, it's enjoyable for me, you know? Well, I mean, that's something that I really try to focus on in the store as well, is, is keeping it true to those roots uh, because flavor is what we've always been searching for, you know? Effects, 
are secondary. Obviously, we're looking for effects as well. But at the end of the day, it's it's trying to find the unique, the different, and stuff that's really been grown really well. You know, um, you know, like you were talking about the the expiration dates or the, the harvest dates and stuff like that. It's like that's something that we really concentrate on at Archive is making sure that when you get something, it's going to be a good representation of it because. You know, when stuff's four or five months old, like, especially with flour, depending on how it's been stored, handled, all these different things, like, it might have started out really, really good, and now it's trash, you know? And so, um, here we really try to focus on making sure that you're getting a good representation of that product, and we try to support companies that really care about the product that they're putting out. And so, um, I... I don't know if we're 100% unique in that, but a lot of shops that I go into, you know, I'll be like, oh, let me see that. I know that strain, I know that garden. And then like I pull it out and it's nine months old. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, okay, well that was good. You're like I saw the last batch yeah. after this. I was yeah. hoping this was gonna be the new batch, exactly. you know? Well, I think like you're talking about curating a menu, you know, you yeah. put you put a lot of heart and soul into curating the perfect menu. Well, mm -hmm. that's a big factor too is freshness because if I'm if I'm looking at multiple menus mm -hmm. online and I see, okay, these people got the menu, but I'm on there a couple times and I was excited to go check this out and like you said, it was nine months old. Yeah. Whereas, okay, maybe this place has a, a couple less things that, I, that I'm piquing my interest on their menu, but I know they're going to be fresh and I know they're all going to be bomb. So yeah. let me go check it out, you know. I think that's a, a big factor that, like you said, some shops might overlook, you know? I mean, it's like, I think uh, for us, like our number one priority is is that the customer has a good experience and they get to enjoy the hard work that these gardens have put in, you know? And it's like, uh, if something does not hit and it's like getting old, like we'll throw it on a super sale, you know? It's like not everything's gonna hit. Like you're, you're gonna have like the ups and downs and the cycles on these things and so, it's just trying to see, well, okay, say we're at four or five months old on this. Well, it's going to be, we're going to change the value proposition on it and make it so if you are looking for something to budget, like you're going to get to experience at least close to what that was. Mm -hmm. um, but the price is going to reflect that, you know, really and it's, good, it's, yeah. not, it's not just about making a buck. It's believing that if the customer has a good experience and enjoys the products that they're buying, that they're going to come back for more. And it's, it's building that trust in that relationship um, that we we really try to focus on so how do you balance like uh, like we were talking about earlier everybody has their own different palette you say yours maybe has changed a little bit over time how do you balance not bringing that bias in because i think that's something i would have a hard time with <laughs> if i'm curating the menu yeah. for this shop and people bring in four different things. And, and like I say, I, tier, I steer more towards the gassy, the funky yeah. stuff more yeah. so than the fruity stuff. Mm -hmm. The market probably is 50-50 or more so going to want this stuff. But I'm going to have a hard time passing up this stuff. How do you kind of balance that? I, I always joke around in the shop. If I only put weed on the shelf that I liked, I, we wouldn't sell any weed. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, you know, I... I have to trust a my nose, you know, it's like just because I don't personally like to smoke something like I'm pretty, my palate's different, you know, I've been smoking weed for almost 30 years and like I've had access to genetics and a, such a wide range of varieties that like most people don't, you know, and so I've had a long time to refine, decide what I like and you know, find the things like that work really good with my brain chemistry mm -hmm. and so it's like my palate's different and if i only focus on what i like then really like we wouldn't sell as much weed and it's like it's a lot of it's just trying to listen to the feedback of the customers um and looking at how it's grown you know and how it's handled and you know the age um and putting trust in the gardens too you know it's like a lot of these they're they're long relationships that we've built and it's like, I'll, I'll ask them, like, hey, what are you guys all smoking on? Like, what are you guys really enjoying right now? And just because it's something that isn't my personal preference doesn't mean it's not good. It's, um, and so, you know, having our, our staff, um, trusting the gardens, and then seeing what sells well. You know, a lot of times you try stuff out and not everything is going to work. But when the things do work, then you make notes and you try to keep curating more and more of that. And... Uh, there's a lot of trends, right, too, that you kind of try to follow. Like, um, 
It's, there is no wrong, you know, when it comes to weed. It's like if people enjoy it, that's, all subjective. that's what matters, right? It's completely subjective. So um, just trying to take the ego out of it, really, and just focusing on the craft, I think, is what I, what I try to do. So. I think a big part of what makes you guys successful also is having a really well-trained, informed staff that actually knows their shit when yeah. it comes to the products they're selling because that's another thing that... That used to that reminds me of days of old. You yeah. know what I mean. That I don't get to experience anymore if I go into a weed store in California. You yeah. know, it's a bunch of people that were hired for one very particular reason for the most part, and uh, it's not their weed knowledge. You yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, the great thing about weed is that everybody enjoys weed. Well, not everybody, but you know what I mean. Like, it's not it's not one demographic. It's all ages everybody from all realms mm -hmm. and uh, that's always been one of my favorite parts about weed is that it brings everybody together right and so uh, we just always try to have somebody from everywhere and uh, it usually works out um, I think a, a huge part too is also like you're saying like, like when you're curating the menu people have come to trust the archive name, people have come to trust the shop. They know you guys are always going to have some fire. Yep. You have that, you basically that's passed down from the growers to you. Like you said, you trust their opinions as well. You'll ask what, what's, what, you know, what's your crew going crazy for right now? You know what I mean? And I think, again, having so many more of, you know, the operators out here that are owner operated, yep. that's another big difference between here and California, you know, everything where the, people are actually hands on in their business here. They're actually informed on what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And that gets passed down to you. It gets, it, may, it trickles all the way down to the consumer and gives, it gives you a better experience being involved in the industry. It gives them a better experience smoking the product as the yeah. end consumer, you know? There's still a lot of really great craft farmers in Oregon that care a ton about the product, you know? And, and there's big guys too, but we try pretty hard to not carry those products unless, you know, we don't like to turn people away. You know, if something, if people want something, we're not gonna turn our noses and say, oh no, sorry, we're too cool for that. You know, it's like, we, we want everybody to get to enjoy. And, um, but, you know, the, the amount of farmers in Oregon that still really care about the plant, it's not just about the dollar, is we're really blessed that way. You know, there's a lot of really good folks that do really good work. And I noticed a lot of these farms, they, they tend, it's like half their menu is, like you said, it's more the stuff that has become popular that you're going to grow because it sells, but they all kind of have their own little unique thing that they grow as well, too, which is also really refreshing to see, you know? Yeah. It's not all about following trends and doing what the next guy's doing. Everybody's still kind of come, trying to come up with their own unique shit, you know? The one thing that would be great if we could move past eventually is the test numbers. <laughs> Just people's obsession with them? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the test numbers are still something that people focus on a lot. And, and sometimes they, they can be reflective of the product, but as we both know, it's... If you're shopping based on test numbers, you're going to miss out on so many amazing varieties that you would have really enjoyed so and would have gotten you so much higher than yep. the shit that has test 30% THC, exactly. you know? Yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing that I, I harp on that all the time, you know what I mean? It's just, and again, I think, like you said, you've been smoking weed for 30 years, like people that are really into this stuff, the people that watch these videos, they know this. A lot of the people that come to your shop, rather than just the shop down the street that they are looking at, at their you know, menu online and just yeah. going based off THC numbers, people are starting to understand that, you know? They are. And then especially yeah. with all these different scandals that have become, you know, exposed over the years of, <laughs> of the, the results essentially meaning fucking nothing anyway, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's nice to see that people are somewhat starting to wake up to the fact that, like, there's so many more factors that come into play mm -hmm. than just that one THC number, yeah. you know? Yeah, and it's, you know... To each their own. If that's if that's truly what you what you want, like we've got you covered. <laughs> we've got forty percent weed on the shelf. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, like I said, 40%. some some of my favorite stuff is gonna not gonna even gonna test twenty percent probably. OG Kush, you know, you know, pretty much every classic OG strain is not gonna test over twenty. It's gonna be lower, relatively and, speaking. Uh, it gets me really high. I don't know about you. Yeah, nothing better than some. Good classic OG. Well, like we were talking about, I mean, there's so many different varieties out there and so many different... It's 
the way I've been looking at it lately is like, okay, you grab those two jars right there. They're, they're right next to you on the table. You see two different varieties in there, but each one of those is their own universe made up of their own, you know, components. That, so it's like what you're looking at is a jar full of 150 things that are in totally different ratios and different, you know what I mean? So if we just focus on that one number, it's like you're only looking at a tiny sliver of the overall picture, you know? It's, it just seems like a silly thing. It, I mean... It, it's relative, like it's, you know, it's not like it's it's just an irrelevant number that doesn't matter, but to focus on it like it's the main thing and, and for things to be marketed that way, especially, yeah. it just, it doesn't make sense. And yeah. I think people are starting to wake up to that, which is nice. I agree. If it's sub 20, that's where people still struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants something that's 20% and yeah. above. All right, should I try this honey banana? Yeah, why don't you give it a go out there, the Focus V. How do you like these things? Um, I'm not super familiar with these. I've you puffco guy. I've used I've just used puffcos, um, which I like. So I I've, same here. I've been a puffco guy. I got the the puffco at home. I got the 3D chamber in there mm -hmm. with the, the little beads and all that. And uh, this thing I think honestly gives you milkier rips without all the extra stuff going on there. Just with the the regular chamber that it comes with. At least the, it seems to like hold its temp throughout the dab. I noticed with the Puffco, if you put a big dab on there, the dab itself cools down the nail a little bit more than I want it to, unless I start at a higher temperature. This thing, I, uh, I like it. It's got the digital readout too. I'm not sure what battery life is like on this thing compared to the other one, but I definitely want to get a little bit more use out of this one and then maybe do like a comparison video or something. <coughs> It's pretty tasty. Yeah. Like I say, it's that. It, I mean, it's it's a it's strong smell translates a hundred percent to the flavor. I mean, it's not not a lot of variation there to me, but it it does concentrate like right there on the tip of your tongue, kind of tickles your nose a little bit. It gets me right up in here. Mm-hmm. But it does have that like, I mean, it it's literally tastes almost spot on to the banana runts, like. Candy. The candy, yeah. There's a, there's a few strains out there that I'm like, okay, this was the appropriate name for this. Like anybody who has tried the candy, it's the first time they smoke this, that that is what it would definitely remind me of. I don't get that with Runt's the flower strain, but. But in, in, in hash form you do? Mm, I don't know, I mean like the candy Runt's has always got that like really tart, you know, like tanginess. More of a, if we're gonna do candy, more of like a sweet tart thing than a, right? yeah. yeah. I think calling this banana runts or there was another candy that I used to eat all the time that had that had the banana in it. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, calling this like a, a banana runts to me would be more accurate than what runts is, you know. I'm gonna try one out of here too, just because nice <laughs> yesterday we were doing one, I think it was the uh the purple petals. I got I, I thought I got a full representation of the flavor out of uh out of the this thing and then I hit it off the nail and it was a little different. Both uh, Echo and Happy Cabbage have been here since the beginning of Rec in Oregon and uh, you know Happy Cabbage was one of the first major solventless producers that was around um, and so it's it's been cool to see the progression of everybody moving more and more towards rosin which which I definitely prefer or bubble for that matter. Oh, that's another thing I appreciate. I went to heat it up, it said low battery. I'm used to, oh, now I gotta plug it in. Yeah. It was just telling me low battery, but you're still gonna get your dab. Nice. I like the little bigger chamber, too. Like a little the wider. Is so small, you know? It's like, a, like the tiniest amount of water in there. I like a little bit more water like that has. Yeah, it gets good diffusion, but it doesn't ride all the way up like mm -hmm. the Puffco does. I can't tell you how many of those Fucking peak tops I've broken, dude. <laughs> I'm on like my fourth one. Every time I go to grab a Puffco, the battery's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got one of the charging stations that you just set it on, and that's been a game changer. I mean, I like having the phone app, but I kind of just like not even having to use it. I don't, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to take, oh, where's my phone? I left it somewhere. Now I got to go find my phone and come over here to, if I want to change something with yep. the Puffco. This thing's just kind of, it's all right there. I do appreciate the digital readout. I, I enjoy technology, but when it comes down to like taking a dab and that kind of stuff, like I don't want to have to like pull out my phone, do the setting on there. Like 
I didn't even know you could connect the puff code to your phone until the other day. <laughs> we were talking about that the other day, bro. Like I, for me, like especially like taking taking a regular dab out of a glass bong, like all the crazy diffusion and all that stuff. We don't need that now for hash. You just need a couple of holes. Yeah. For me, bro, a flat top banger with a, like the taller ones. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, my one of my favorite ones was like the original. I think it was the highly educated one, like the first quartz bucket that he made. It was a really deep one, and I had a, a, a directional carb cap that had the long snout on it. So, like, dude, you could get that thing to ride all the way up the entire thing. It's, yeah. it, you don't need any more surface area than that. You don't, if you, you want to put a couple beads in there, if you want yeah. some more surface area, whatever. That, that, I get perfect dabs out of that. The, the slurper with the laser and all the timers. At, at some point, I was into, like, gearing it out as far as it could go but at some point i'm like okay you guys lost me yeah like i'm yeah, i'm staying right, right here bro <laughs> I, I guess it's like anything in life eventually yeah. you become the old guy you know right <laughs> you get off my long guy but yeah i don't know to me we had already perfected the dab now let's continue perfecting the process let's continue perfecting the plant let's let's continue finding new like the the hardware part of it the taking the dab part of it we're there like yeah. let's we don't need to keep focusing our energy in that department that's just my opinion I think it's really cool and I'm all for it, but it's just, for me, I, I enjoy taking dabs, but most of all I like smoking joints and it's like rolling the joint, all that, you know, is part of that whole process and like some people like the ritual of like, you know, get their, their timer and all these different things. and. For me, it's it's rolling the joint, getting not getting the, the timer plan. and the you know. That just, feels much more meditative. I just get to me. lost, you know, in the process. Yeah. So. No, yeah. There's a. I, I could never stop smoking flour. You know, no. there was a period of time when I first like got on the hash real heavy, where I was like smoking maybe ninety percent hash and just like a joint at night or whatever, you yeah. know. But the older I get, the more, for whatever reason, I tend to enjoy smoking more flour. I still love smoking hash just as much, but I feel like it's more 50-50 now than it used to be. Yeah. You know? I don't know what that is. It's, again, I'm very nostalgic with my weed. Any, anything that reminds me of a certain time or whatever it is, you know, I'm always going to enjoy it. For me, I, when I first started smoking weed, it was just rolling joints, you know? First started smoking time. weed, it was smoking out of it pop can you know oh yeah <laughs> the apple the apple the soda can. can oh yeah there's all the different methods over time the gravity bong oh that's, god yeah that was, that was the second time i ever smoked weed in my life it was a gravity bong surprised you smoked weed again after yes. that <laughs> I, i've never been that high again in my life i saw somebody making a gravity bong out of vape pens the other day online oh god like, oh. oh god like I haven't seen a gravity bong in a while. People still doing that? Uh, it was just like some like real, you know. We just like, used to do it in the kitchen sink with the cut up fucking milk know. carton. Yep. Oh man, those are the days. And a lot of knife hits. <laughs> good times, good times, man. Well, this is a great video, man. I appreciate you joining me for this one. Like I said, you guys, uh, Max going to be featured here on the channel a lot more in the future. I'm really excited to get this grow log thing going. I think that's probably going to be the funnest content at least for me to produce and edit and all that and I, I, there's going to be so much for me to learn along the way too so I'm I'm really excited to learn anything I can from you and from Fletch as well and to pass that on to the audience out there because I know there's a ton of people out there that are really excited for it too so super excited about that thanks for joining us for this uh for this review guys we will see you on the next one do all the stuff down there press the buttons you know subscribe like hit the bell so you don't miss the next one and that's when we'll see you next